Welcome back to Intelligent Design. Um, I'm your host, Dan Felder, and once more we are playing an incredible game, Castlevania, and talking about what makes it so intelligently designed. So, we are on to level 3 right now, and stage 7. Um, I'm not fully sure what tracks that, because I think we've been through more than 7 rooms so far. Um, but anyway, let's get in. This is a great level, and I'm going to immediately go kill myself to show you how this works. <laughs> so, we're going to go pick up some stuff. All right, oh, there's a ghost. Go back and kill that. Now, if we kept going forward, this thing would have ripped us apart. So watch, ah, hunchback. And so watch, these guys are really designed to start punishing you for trying to hit them with a whip. See, I'm just immediately, look how much damage that dealt to me up there in my health bar. Um, if you just sort of run forward and hit them with the whip, they're designed so that it's really a pain. You go and attack them with the whip and they're jumping over you. They're, they will not stand still. So you take a lot of damage to them, but you do get to kill them, which is one of the things that Castlevania does to, to imply that maybe this is how you're supposed to be fighting them and you're just bad at it and you need to get better. But nope, nope, you will get completely destroyed. We go fight this guy and he's running away and now he's throwing bones at us and oh god, we barely survived that. Okay. Obviously, that was the wrong way to go about it. If you're taking that much damage on one screen, you haven't solved the screen yet. So Castlevania has this very appealing progression system. Very appealing progression system. Where at first, you're going down... You're going to um, just basically see how far you can get in the level and survive. You don't need to solve the early rooms yet, because... Right now, all you're trying to do is just get to the next room. Just get to the next room. And each time you just get to the very next room... Getting to that next area is a huge reward. So now I'm going to show you a bit more about what happens. If I just run forward with this guy, and I'm trying to fight him, and now I have to fight both it and the ghost at once, it's not pretty. Not pretty. Because <laughs> also the thing is, people tend to, in games, attack the nearest threat. The very nearest threat. Oh, he respawned because I didn't kill him. Um, and so basically, if you're firing against one guy and you're trying to shoot him, and then another guy runs in, you immediately start trying to attack that guy. And that makes no sense, because you've maybe you've half-killed the first person, and the second person comes in, and now you have to go kill that person before you can get back to the first one. But there's this in, this, We see this in shooter design a lot, that if you start by attacking one guy, now a guy runs at the side, you immediately have this reaction that's programmed into us evolutionarily to, if guy runs at me, I go try to react to deal with that threat, to avoid it or to attack it. So we, that's how we react to something that's surprising, the new threat. Um, unfortunately, if we're already dealing with a threat, it pushes us into a bad situation. So that's one thing they're playing with there. They showed us the ghosts relatively safely before, and now here's where it starts messing with us. So we go. For, I'm going to show you how to actually beat this. So you go forward, now go back, hit that ghost, no problem. This guy comes in, you pause, hit him. No issue. Now, they give you the um, holy water here, which implies the holy water might be how you beat them, which you can do. Watch. There. It's an arc, and it stands on the ground, so if you miss even, they'll probably hit it. And so there you just go forward and hit them. And add this guy here. Now, why is he that much higher up? Well, it makes it feel like you're not doing the same thing three times in a row. You only do it twice in a row, so that's nice. But also because there's a way to beat this early section where you're running forward full speed, and you run forward, and you go and hit that guy, and then you run forward, and you hit that guy, and you can hit him, you can hit him there with the longer rope whip especially. But this guy doesn't work at, well because he's too high. Just too high up. See? doesn't work. All right, so now I'm going to show you the next er section of the game. So here, you, you actually are supposed to run up and hit that guy full speed. Um, usually you don't take damage if you do that. So that shows the little uh, progression we've got here. So we've got this section. One second. Bam. Okay. Um, over here. Oh, the ghost's back. Okay. So let's see if I can respawn that monkey. All right. Nope. All right. So go here and... This way you can hit him with that, and if you do, you do unlock the first health power-up. But this guy, you cannot do that, so you just wait for him to fall down and then hit him. But this guy over here, it helps to go up and hit him full speed. So again, they're already changing the rules a little bit in here. You shoot the first guy in a dangerous area with the ghost, next person without it, and now um, the first guys you can run up and hit full speed, but then the third person you can't, but then the last person you have to again. So that's really clever. All right. Now, this is a, they use a lot of the delayed tactic in this section, where an enemy looks like it's just standing still. So, like, it looks like that those guys haven't triggered yet in the early areas, the hunchbacks, that's what they're called. So that's because they have, when you trigger them, you get close enough to trigger them, they pause for a moment and then attack, which tells the player it looks like 
that, oh, they, I, they haven't triggered yet because normally we're used to enemies attacking us the moment we see them. So by walking into that area, um, we, it actually makes us think that they haven't triggered yet. So by walking to right into their first trigger when they're right on screen for the first point, then we wait, then they jump in and then we kill them. That's the little bit of misdirection that you have to learn that by slowly, carefully approaching them, that's, if you do that, you'll figure out their tactic that you can actually wait a little bit for them to proc them when they'll jump right in front of you. Perfect for the whip. Whereas if you don't know that's coming, um, it makes it look like they're waiting longer than they actually are. So this uh, crow is similar. Watch. So we go in and it's just waiting for us. Okay, now it, that's so that's where I, it, it, its uh, trigger must be down there. Not true. Um, these crows see they look like they're waiting, but they're not. I wanted to kill myself there so I could show you um, quickly what I'm talking about. They also are waiting. So this guy. Let's get this ghost first. So this guy right here. Um, he see he triggers now. He had but he waited for a little bit. So if we were running forward, we get him from behind, like they do in the opening screen, and that works really well. So there's a lot of ways you can handle these guys, and they're often considered one of the more hated enemies in the entire game, aside from maybe the knights, which we'll see um, in level 5, which is my favorite level in the game. Um, but hunchbacks are there too, and they're even worse, um, because they're just so hard to deal with if you're trying to fight them honestly, just reacting and swinging at them. They're jumping all over you, and they're just hurting you over and over again, and you just can't hit them. But if you coax them into the right strategy, it's easy. All right, so these birds are another nightmare because people don't realize the moment they're on screen, they're actually triggered. All right, now we run forward, hit this guy, bam. See, I knew he was there, so I could go forward and coax him out. Now this bird, there we go. Now, see, this bird is already triggered the moment it's on screen. So again, it looks like it's going to kill you. Now these birds are horrifying because, again, if you get knocked off into those pits, you just die. On the stairs, you have very limited mobility. And this guy is already triggered. So there we go. I walk back, let him uh, figure out how to attack me, get him onto an angle that I like better, and then I kill him. So this section is actually, an, again, a nightmare for a lot of players, but it's really easy once you know the tactic. Now I use the, water, the thing there, and that's the first real indication besides the original bat of just how good the secondary weapon can be. Because if I tried to go down there with my whip, I would have had to walk into his bones, his, all the bones he's throwing. But by getting in with the, the um, arcing path, of this to make the holy water really valuable. All right, that's where I could pick up the axe I wanted to. You see it falls instantly, so you have to actually know about it and be ready to catch it, which I think is not great design. I mean, sure, it just sort of punishes you for not knowing that that wasn't going to drop on the ground, and that's not, it doesn't feel fair. Like a lot of, like the enemies, you don't know they're manipulating you at first when they aren't working the way you'd expect them to, but that you do know. This is one of my favorite sections of the game right here, because if it's it's so easy to bypass. It looks incredibly hard when you first see it, but there's this really cool tactic, and then when you figure it out, you feel so smart. Because again, in the first previous two screens, it's all a bit about move forward, stop, wait, hit. Move forward, stop, wait, hit. So it's a very sluggish early section. Whereas here, it's very different, the optimal strategy. And this feels so dangerous and scary at first. You get here with very low life originally, but now if you just do this, I'm just, just mashing down the side button and the up button at the same time, just mashing down side and up. <laughs> I didn't do anything else. I just pushed the buttons down and held them and the room played itself. Feels awesome. So they counterpoint the original um, stop and wait with just a pure move forward as fast as you can thing. And this dangerous room with the Medusa heads and with the, with the bone guy on stairs and all this stuff going on suddenly becomes so easy. You sometimes take a hit from there because of RNG, but even then it's super simple. All right, we're gonna pick up the stopwatch here, which is something that's really useful in this level. See, that guy's too far down to hit, so I'm just gonna walk back a little bit and eventually he goes up and I hit him. See, if otherwise it looks completely unfair. But just by but just by leading them back, they eventually change tactics. So jump, hit. See, that's the thing I was talking about earlier, that you can, it's very difficult to double jump, but if by jumping and starting my attack midair, I can jump over and hit the fireball. Which again is a very clever use of things. You can double jump um, over those things, but you don't have to. And so a lot of people end up using the stopwatch here that they give you right before this section to freeze them in place, so you just wail on them. All right, this is gonna be bad. It's cause that thing, all right, there, that's, that's an angle I can hit them on. Okay. Now we'll try this again. Goes up, hit him. No problem. So a lot of people use the stopwatch here. Um, 
to freeze them in place so that you don't have to worry about this jumping pattern. But once you figure it out and get your timing right, it's really easy to do. Now you notice I did actually double jump over there. It's possible, but it's very easy to just get the fire, to get the whip off. If you want to be really safe, because if you get stuck in front of it and just keep wailing on it like this, 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 you might be mid attack by the time you, re you realize it's about to fire. So that's when you want to be jumping. So you might get stuck if you start wailing on it. So it's very safe to go three attacks, then you wait, then you jump and you finish it off. So that's the optimal strategy for beating those guys I have found. I'm sure there are, might be even better ones, but that section which is really annoying. Oh, see that what happened there was, it was at an angle that if I hit it at the top of my arc, I would miss, so I had to jump and then start swinging at the top of my arc, not jump and swing immediately in order to hit it at the right angle, which is a really nasty bit, bit of spacing that they do. All right, I should have been able to hit it though. Like there, that time I did. Bam, one, two, three. Four, five. There we go. And hit that, kills it immediately. No problem. Bam, bam. This game is really great to play, like a lot of puzzle games, with a friend because it's an action puzzle game. So again, we talked about a little bit of the distinction of that last time, but I, I figured out a better way while I was watching the re recording of the previous session to talk about what an action puzzle game is. So a puzzle game is about not knowing what you're supposed to do or rather how you're supposed to do it and figuring that out, but how you do it is very easy. Sudoku is a puzzle. You don't, you, you don't know how to solve the problem, but solving the problem once you know how is very easy. Anybody can write numbers in a box. Um, anybody can fill out words in a crossword. The trick is to figure out what the word is. Whereas an action game is, it's very obvious you're supposed to know what you're supposed to do, but the question is, can, are you able to do it? Are you able to move fast enough? Are you able to stick your attacks fast enough? Are you able to do it? Whereas an action puzzle game combines the two. It takes an action format and builds in the puzzle format. So this game really is more of a puzzle game because the actual techniques are not very hard to pull off. So I jumped there, I knew he was gonna hit, jump forward and I hit him, bam. And now there's another, be another one and I jump forward. Whoosh. See again, they alternate the first one, which is sort of a stop and wait guy. Move forward, stop, let him jump in front of you, kill him with another with the next guy. So if you try to repeat the same strategy by moving forward and stopping, he'll kill you pretty hard. But by jumping forward and immediately hitting him, it feels different. So good level flow. Now I'm gonna use the stopwatch here after take a bit of damage because now they're introducing us to this at the same area as the Medusa heads. And it's really not pretty because they come at slightly different angles sometimes and it can just get be bad. See? Just getting, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna freeze time and start using my item for the first real time <laughs> since the holy water and that one angle. And my freezing time there gets really easy. Now you might be thinking, how are you gonna beat um, a boss with you know, just one health, hit, with just four like hit points left? And because a lot of enemies do four damage or, or, very, or in one hit, not two. And bosses in this game are actually really unsatisfying. It's really, um, the bosses themselves usually don't have many mechanics. You're not actually, there isn't much strategy to the boss itself. More of the boss is just sort of a sack of hit points at the end of the level, uh, with the exception of Dracula and the Grim Reaper mostly. And a little bit the Frankenstein, which are the next three bosses. But mostly they're sort of sacks of hit points at the end of the level, and it's very, you spam an attack and you hope to kill them before they kill you. There isn't much strategy involved in the boss, which is un unfortunate, but it's not a big deal because the reason that's not a big deal is that the level is what's really thing shine and you have to master the level to get to the enemy um, quick, quickly enough. And if you figure out how to kill the boss, um, with, or rather which item has the best attack pattern for the boss, then you can um, start figuring out um, the rest of the level is becomes basically four different levels at once. Like level five, for example, by the way, I'm not moving here to keep your visual attention because I'm worried about running out of time on that timer up there. So, all right, anyway, I'll, I will a little bit. I can, I've got some time. So the reason that you're trying to, um, yeah, sorry, okay. Forget all that gibberish. Here's the point. Um, some items, as I mentioned earlier, are really good against the boss. Some are really bad against the rest of the level. So what happens is you can, by applying different items in different sections, you can get your run down. So maybe the ax, for example, is really bad against the Gr Grim Reaper, but really good against the second and third levels. Whereas the Holy Water is best against the Grim Reaper, worst against the hallway right before it, and so on. So by so basically, the boss's mechanics aren't really fought honestly. More, it's just... Um, trying to find a compromise between items that are better against the bosses and worse against the rest of the rooms and trying to figure out which is the best item, either for your play style or just overall. 
But here we're going to do a thing. So I'm actually going to die here intentionally because I want to show you a thing. So if I hit this, which is something that you, people naturally do because they go down and try to hit the enemy before it can hit them, but they don't deal any damage, they say, oh, there's a health pickup. That's great. Now, there's actually sort of a secret hidden there, um, which is that you actually don't want that health pickup. So I'm actually going to die here um, pretty hard, I expect, because these guys are nasty. Um, so what happens is... Oh, actually, I might, I might just beat him fairly. That's kind of annoying, because I want to show you the next thing. All right, I'm just going to let him kill me. Come on. Dude, I could kill you instantly. Please just kill me. All right, I'm just going to walk into him. Okay. Now, the reason I want to show you that is because there's an optimal strategy that's really effective at killing these guys. Um, and once you figure it out, it, they become much easier. And it's, re and it's also very clever to see how they misdirect you. So here I'm just doing that, and I'm waiting, because... Sometimes they fire a little bit faster, and it's much safer to, to do three attacks and wait. Bam. I need, a big, I need a bigger whip. I don't want to be fighting these guys with a smaller whip, because you get used to the hitbox. It's not real, the, the distance isn't really what's important overall for safety. It's the fact that you just get used to the longer hitbox. All right, looks like I might not actually get the whip. All right, I don't, I'm actually don't even have the stopwatch here, so, so this is going to be an area I actually have to fight honestly, which is not something I usually practice. Because, um, all right, because you just don't normally need to. All right, so now I showed you how you, you sort of naturally walk down. You naturally try to attack the guy next to you. But they're not, he's not vulnerable until you walk to the center of the room. So people think, oh, there's a health pickup. And because they're going through the rest of the level, they just keep getting the health pickup. But there's actually a secret way to fight the boss, which is this. Go here, go here, jump up to the top. And actually, you see, once this block is gone, you can't do this. which is a very, very safe place. You can take damage here, but it's really unlikely. So yeah, watch this. I'm just wailing on him and he's, oh, hit me once and he's dead. <laughs> so that's this really evil little bit of uh, misdirection. Players naturally walk down that block. They naturally try to attack um, the enemy nearest to them. They hit the thing, and it says, oh, look, isn't it great? There's a there's a health power up in there. Well, don't you want the health power up? And they're real, but secretly, you don't want the health power up because that destroys the block that you need because otherwise you cannot jump that high to get back up to the higher level. All right, well... That is, um, and that adds a lot of depth and interest to the boss strategies, which previously just otherwise are not very interesting. So that makes the boss a lot more interesting. And players that figure that out um, suddenly can feel so smart and so clever they're able to exploit this. But even if you don't want to do that, um, you can still try to beat it in the normal way if you feel like that is unfair or um, just really good. And also because it gives you the health pickup, it gives you the health power up there, it does mean that even when you're getting fooled by that trick, you're not getting super punished. You still do have more health to actually try to fight the boss fairly with. So, just brilliant. Anyway, um, this is that was the end of this episode, and I will see you next time. Later. Bye.